I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. Events force me to conclude there is already enough about the Trump campaign's June 9, 2016 meeting with the Russians that is publicly known, admitted to, and or reported to justify the arrest of Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, and Paul Manafort today, and to justify the impeachment conviction and removal of Donald Trump as president tomorrow. And Trump has now jumped on this bandwagon, beginning to rationalize that conspiring with an enemy nation is just politics, while one of his own lawyers has inadvertently opened the door to the prospect that Trump may have been directly involved with that meeting or even have attended it. Per the email chain released by Trump Jr., the man setting up the meeting specifically states that the Russians, quote, offered to provide the Trump campaign with some official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary, and that it is, quote, part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. Trump Jr. arranged a meeting at which he agreed to receive what he believed was official Russian government information and support for the Trump campaign. The June 9th meeting was, as far as the Trump campaign knew, a meeting with an emissary of the Russian government. Per Federal Election Commission filings, the president's campaign paid $50,000 to one of Trump Jr.'s attorneys two weeks before the Veselnitskaya story broke. This would be legal if and only if the attorney was working on campaign matters. By all accounts, the June 9th meeting to conspire with Russian emissaries was a Trump campaign meeting. Per the email timeline, Trump Jr. confirmed the meeting on June 7, 2016 at 6.14 p.m. Eastern Time. Two hours and 59 minutes later, Trump himself apparently surprised his own staff by announcing during a speech that he would give another speech the following week, revealing how Clinton's, quote, corrupt dealings gave, quote, favorable treatment to other governments, including, quote, the Russians. If Trump did not know on June 7th of his son's planned meeting with the Russian go-betweens, on June 9th, his sudden announcement bordered on clairvoyance. Per the New York Times, and not directly denied by the White House, Trump Jr.'s initial false statement dismissing the conspiracy as a meeting about adoptions was drafted aboard Air Force One by presidential advisors and signed off on by Trump himself. The July 8, 2017 statement covering up the truth of the Russian conspiracy was a White House cover-up. Per the Trump attorney Jay Sekulow, the appropriateness of the June 9th meeting and those who attended it was reviewed by the Secret Service. Quote, if this was nefarious, why did the Secret Service allow these people in? The president had Secret Service protection at that point, unquote. He did indeed. However, Trump Jr. did not. As of June 9, 2016, participants in meetings, even meetings involving Trump family members, would not have been vetted by the Secret Service. The only reason the Secret Service would or should have vetted a meeting on June 9, 2016 was if Donald Trump himself was directly and personally affected by that meeting, or if Donald Trump himself knew about that meeting, or if Donald Trump himself had asked them to vet the people at that meeting, or if Donald Trump himself had personally attended that meeting. One of the president's own attorneys has now opened up the possibility that Trump himself attended the conspiracy meeting with Trump Jr., Manafort, Kushner, and the Russians, or at minimum, has raised the question of how else Trump might have been directly involved or affected by the meeting and the seemingly treacherous business conducted at it. The June 9, 2016 meeting directly involved Trump's son, Trump's son-in-law, and Trump's soon-to-be campaign chairman, believing they would be receiving dirt on their opponent from the Russian government via middlemen. And Trump's own lawyer now raises the possibility Trump himself was somehow directly and immediately involved enough that if it were nefarious, the Secret Service would have prevented the meeting. Donald Trump's conduct relative to the June 9, 2016 meeting before the election thus may include crimes of conspiracy and effectual, if not legally literal, espionage and disloyalty to the United States of America. Donald Trump's conduct relative to the June 9, 2016 meeting after the election specifically the production of Trump Jr.'s false statement by White House staff on July 8, 2017, that may constitute obstruction of justice. 
Trump Jr., Kushner, Manafort, perhaps the Russians, perhaps others, should be arrested today. They will not be. Donald Trump should be impeached tomorrow. He will not be. But that this endgame is approaching inevitably can be discerned, not just by the guilty actions of Trump and his son and the others, but by the suddenly shifting defenses from Trump apologists who still place party and power ahead of country. Fox News and the right-wing media had begun to float the collusion is not really a crime defense from host Greg Jarrett as early as the 23rd of May. Sean Hannity tried it on June 23rd, Britt Hume on June 25th, Janine Pirro July 15th, and finally, Trump himself on July 17th. Most politicians would have gone to a meeting like the one Don Jr. attended in order to get info on an opponent. That's politics. On July 16th had come Trump attorney Sekulow's dubious, damning defense that the Secret Service would have stopped a conspiratorial meeting with the Russians, even though the only person in the building then under Secret Service protection was Donald Trump himself. No, Trump Jr., Kushner, Manafort, and the others will not be arrested today, and Trump will not be impeached tomorrow. But for those who still defend the clear and present menace to our freedoms that is Donald Trump, and for those who fear our political system will never be able to rid us of him, there is a startling number buried inside the latest Washington Post ABC News poll. 58% of Americans disapprove of Trump's presidency. 60% of us believe the Russians tried to influence the outcome of the vote that elected him. But still, just 41% of Americans believe Trump campaign members intentionally helped the Russians to influence the election. Well, more correctly, only 41% believed that. The surveying for that poll closed on Thursday, July 13th, before Trump indicated maybe he had heard about the meeting longer ago than just a few days earlier. Before it turned out Trump Jr. had lied and there were two other Russians at that meeting. Before Sekulow inadvertently raised the question of why the Secret Service, guarding only Trump, protecting only Trump, looking out for only Trump, would have been vetting a meeting Trump did not attend. The Trump gang leaks like a sieve. It cannot keep a story straight. It views truth only as one of a series of escapes, and it is being pursued by the most skilled crime fighters in the world. The percentage of Americans who believe Trump campaign members intentionally helped the Russians to influence our election was just 41% last Thursday. That number will not decline. It will grow. And fast or slow, soon or late, it will grow large enough to end this damnable presidency. Resist. Remove. Peace.